Okay. Hello everyone. Hello mga ka-RPM. <laughs> and welcome to another live stream. Can you hear me? Am I loud here? My feedback, sorry. I had to close one tab. Yan. And as we begin the session, I ask you, what were your key takeaways from our past meeting? And here are the answers. Now, mostly parang favorite ninyo ata yung mga competence-related ethical guidelines. No? And dapat lang. When we talk about practice, well, we need to be competent in what yun yung tatandaan ninyo. Ako rin, yun din yung favorite ko. Well, some would say yung favorite nila ay yung apat na principles. Kasi although napakarami nating ethical guidelines, at the end of the day, yung foundation ng mga ginagawa natin are the four principles that we uphold. Okay. So as promised tonight, we are going to cover the remainder of our code of ethics, our professional ethics. Okay. And kung may time pa later on, depending on the facing of our discussion, baka may mga madiscuss pa ako, baka may bonus discussion pa ako later. So titingnan natin depending on the facing of the discussion. Okay? Pero sige, before we start, no? With our discussion tonight with our online session. Who among you are joining for the first time? Tingnan ko nga, no? Who among you are yung first time lang, yung mga bagong salta pa lang? Because I'm seeing um some the common the usual names. So hello. I'm also seeing some new names, yung mga first time na comment. Yeah, no, I'm not so familiar with these people. So if it's your first time joining tonight, um, welcome to our channel. I hope marami ako ma-share. Yeah, first time daw ni Christine Rose. So hello, tsaka ni Brandon. Yan mga bagong pangalan, no? Hello sa inyo. Kung gusto niyo magpa-shoutout or mag or kung gusto niyo na i-flash natin yung yung pangalan niyo sa screen, mag-comment lang kayo kasi i-flash natin yan sa screen. <laughs> okay. Yun yung gagawin natin. Ayan, hello sa mga um, students natin from Corona Dal. I'm happy to see you again. Okay, I always, ano no, when I, when I do online review, when I do YouTube, palaging may taga-Corona Dal. So thank you very much for the support. No? Ayan. Okay. Ayan pa, Joella Joy, Sarah May. Okay. May mga nagpapashout out. Hello, RPM 2023. Hello, you know. Um, good evening din sa iyo, Mixi. Okay. Nandiyan na rin si... Teka lang, naghang, no? Ba't nung, pag... Ba't nung pag-click ko kay Luningning, naghang? <laughs> okay, siya yung nagbukas ng university natin. Okay, hello kay Luningning. Ayan. I-shoutout ko daw si Rexel. Saan ba nagsabi nun? Si Yuno, no? So, hello sa iyo daw, Rexel. <laughs> Ayan. Andiyan na naman si Kimi. And the rest. Ayan. La Union. I've never been to La Union, no? So, hello sa mga students natin from La Union who are joining us tonight. Okay. Okay. May papaguhin ng... Ah, okay. Gets ko na. Yung settings ko pala naka-power saver. Which is why, no? Meron din tayong attendees na hindi pa magte-take ng board exam, pero nandito na sila, isipin niyo 'yun. And for example, no, shout out sa mga students ng Divine Word College Kalapan. Okay? Alam niyo kung satisfied kayo sa review experience niyo with RGO, alam niyo ba pwede niyo i-recommend sa school ninyo na kunin kami to provide online or maybe even face-to-face -face review to your fourth year students. Just like what we do with DWCC and all, and other and many other universities. Pwede niyo gawin yun. No? Para fourth year pa lang yung mga schoolmates niyo. Meron na silang RGO experience. Yan. Okay? Yan. Just informing you. No? Ayun, sabihin niyo sa mga ano ninyo, sa mga teachers ninyo. Kung satisfied kayo, if you think uh, makakahelp sa mga schoolmates niyo, pwede yun. We also do, ano, anong tawag dito? Dati may mga naging students kami na yung magtitake ng qualifying exam, do you know what a qualifying exam is? Yung para makapag-third year sila, kailangan maipasa nila yung qualifying exam na yun. Meron kaming ganun ng college. Yun, we also cater sa mga students na ganun, no? before sila mag-qualifying exam, 
nagpo-provide din kami ng review. So, yun. Pwede rin yun. Okay? Sige. Yan. Hello po. Good evening po. Okay. 27 days na lang. Yan. Sinano pa ba? Hello. Maayong gabi sa ato ang mga um, attendees from Davao City and Davao Province. Ang um, akong last na visit diha kay atong pag-PAP convention When was that? Back in 2019. So ano na? 20, 21, 22, 23, 4 years na. No? I hope I get to visit Davao soon. Ayan. Okay. Um, ayan. Good evening sa atong mga students from Bacolod City. I miss the city. Ayan. Okay. And also, okay, to our... Hindi ko alam itong taga Iloilo siya, pero na-mention niya, no? So, hello din sa ating mga taga Iloilo, particularly students from University of San Agustin, USA. Okay? Not uni- not USA, no? But University of San Agustin, a school. No? That's what I'm talking about. Ayan. Okay? Sa All Stars of Cebu, what was assigned to me was DevPsych as well as... No, no, no. Not DevPsych. I was asked to discuss psychological assessment and abnormal psychology. While sa Manila, I believe I was tasked to discuss developmental psychology as well as abnormal psychology. Tapos tinapos ko na kagabi yung mga exams ko. So, ayun, paghandaan niyo yun ng mabuti because I prepared the best items for all of you. Okay. Ayan. Nara- napapanaginipan mo na ba, Kisaya, ang I.O.? <laughs> Nagpaparamdam na sa kanyang mga dreams. <laughs> okay and shout out from Cotabato City yan sige okay 7.38 so let's begin let's commence with our discussion and tonight we proceed to our discussion on research ethics I believe marami ako share tonight because as you know um, I'm into research I've been doing research for quite some time And I'm familiar with mga ethical guidelines na hindi lang yung mga nakikita natin sa school. Yung mga inaaral natin sa school, I mean, pati sa Code of Ethics. I'm also familiar with some of the practices that, are researchers, that researchers are supposed to do, researchers are supposed to know. Okay, beyond kung ano yung mga usual na naituturo sa school. Okay, sige. Let's begin. So, the first, cons- the first guideline that we will talk about tonight okay is about the rights and dignity of our participants whenever we do research my dear colleagues okay we respect the rights the dignity of our participants don't treat them as a number don't treat them as what do you call that yung kasi magandang ano dun eh. don't treat them simply as a number in your excel spreadsheet Okay, whenever you do research, think of this as pe- think of them, not these, no. Think of them as people. You are dealing with people. And in whatever we do, may it be practice, teaching, therapy or research, yung pagka-psychometrician or psychologist mo dapat hindi nawawala. Okay? And by saying that, we adhere to the following guidelines. Una, in all aspects We respect the rights, we safeguard the dignity, and protect and promote the welfare of our research participants. Kung baga, for example, hindi ka gagawa ng research na alam mo will be harmful to these people. When you do research, hindi ka magdi-discriminate. When you do research, hindi mo tatratuhin na parang hayop yung mga human participants mo. Okay? You do not take part in research that you know can be harmful. To your fellow human being. Okay? Before beginning any research work in a community, tingnan nyo ito mabuti, no? Not our own or not familiar to us. Kunyari, pupunta ka sa isang indigenous group o kaya sa lugar kung saan hindi ka taga doon, ikaw ay isang visitor, visita ka. We obtain essential information, look at this, no? About their Um, did I write this correctly? No, baka this is a word I'm not familiar with. Ano ba yung Morse, no? Alam ko, narinig ko na ito, no? Okay. Or is this, a, is this a word I'm not familiar with? 
Ah, okay, sorry. Ayun, nahala tayong bukabila. Hindi ko alam yan. Ang ibig para sabihin yan, yung mga norms nila. Yun pala yung mores, no? Ngayon ko lang na-discover. Okay. <laughs> Sige, at least natuto tayo pareho. We need to be familiar with their customs. Kunyari, um, kunyari lang ha, kunyari hindi uso sa buong Pilipinas ang pagbamaano. Pero sa isang lugar, uso ang pagbibles sa matatanda. So, when we do research in that place, we should practice that. O kaya naman, um, yung pananamit sa kanilang lugar ay hindi siya supposedly revealing. Dapat covered yung pananamit mo. E di dapat, you should respect that. Okay? O kaya naman, dapat, for example, gagalang ka sa mga ginagalang nila ng mga spirits, for example, mga deities, no? Okay, we should respect those, you know, na mga paniniwala. We respect their culture. Of course, no, we respect differences. Okay, we, we do not, we do not, what do you call that? We do not um, discriminate. Okay, we do not impose cultural values. We do not impose beliefs. Okay, social structure, iginagalang natin kung sino yung tinuturing nila nakagalang-galang. Tapos, so, tinitingnan din natin yung social structure nila. Diba? Kunyari, no? ginagalang ba ang mga matatanda sa kanila? So, dapat igalang din natin sila. Okay? Customs and traditions. Ano ba yung mga part ng traditions nila na dapat natin malaman before tayo tumapak sa lugar nila? Part yun ng due diligence natin. Kailangan, when we study people from a certain culture, Let's do prior research before undertaking our actual research. For example, dati, my students ako who did a study sa mga Bajau. Ako, I'm not so familiar with the Bajau culture, beliefs, customs, okay? Going back to that. Pero syempre, if you will do research sa isang grupo ng tao, kailangan alam mo yung mga gawin nila. Gawain nila, alam mo yung mga paniniwala nila. Okay. Kung sa kultura nila, hindi sila naniniwala sa Diyos na pinaniniwalaan mo, then you are not supposed to impose. Yan. Ano pa ba? And the same applies to other ethnic groups. Not only ethnic groups, even kung hindi kayo pareho ng lingwahe, hindi kayo pareho ng kulay ng balat, at iba pang mga pinagbumula ng diversity. Okay? Look at this. We respect and abide by their cultural expectations. Kunyari, pagmamano. O kaya naman, kunyari, paggalang sa mga nakatatanda. Okay? Provided that this does not contravene any of the ethical principles of the Code of Ethics, paano ko sa kultura nila may tinotorture? Yun naman, syempre, you are not expected to take part in the torture. Okay? Baka naman kasi ganong extent pala yung kinoconsider nila na normal. O kaya naman, baka sa kultura nila, normal ang, for example, Um, may, may mga sinasakta ng mga matatanda or mga bata. We are not supposed to take part in that. So, gagalangin natin yung culture nila. Pero, in, we are, as long as, hindi siya, um, hindi niya kinokontra yung code of ethics natin. Tsaka alam natin na walang matatapakang tao. Right? Sige. Ano pa yung iba? No? Moving forward. Marami pa to, no? So, moving forward. We respect the rights of research participants should they wish, wish to discontinue their participation at any time. Okay? So, later babalikan natin ito, pero as early as now I'm telling you that if our participants doesn't doesn't if our participant doesn't want to continue anymore, hindi magiiba yung tingin natin sa kanila. Okay? Tapos wala rin siyang consequences kunyari, no kunyari. Ba, masama yun, kunyari, in a school setting, bibigyan mo ng deduction kung hindi magpa-participate in your research. Or is it zero mo sa quiz? Okay, that is unfair. Okay? You have to respect that. You have to respect their autonomy. And, ha- and what do we mean by respecting their autonomy? You, you respect their autonomy by respecting their ability to give their consent and you respect their autonomy by not forcing them to participate, and you respect their autonomy by allowing them to withdraw if they no longer want to participate. 
Okay. Para yung sa palabas, no, hindi natin dapat itinatali yung participant. No, baka yan nakatali yan sa bed, tapos kung ano-anong experiment ginagawa ninyo. No? So that is unethical. Okay. Hindi yan makatao. Okay? What else? We are responsive all throughout the research to participants' non-verbal indications of desire to withdraw from the participation. Especially, no? So, kailangan sensitive ka raw. Especially if the person has difficulty with verbal communication. Sabi mo, kung ayaw mo na mag-participate, sabihan mo lang ako, eh paano kung pipi siya? O paano kung meron siyang language disorder? Paano kung meron siyang intellectual disability? Paano kung meron siyang communication disorder? So you need to, you know, be sensitive pagdating sa mga ganyan. Is a young child, bata siya, hindi siya marunong humindi. Kala niya kapag humindi siya, papagalitan siya. So kailangan, you have to do your best to explain to the child that you can withdraw anytime at walang masamang mangyayari sa iyo. Or is culturally unlikely to communicate. Sa ibang mga culture kasi kunyari, what if sa kultura nila ang babae hindi ka supposedly nakikipag-usap sa isang lalaki? Okay? Ganun pala yung kultura nila. Lalo na kung hindi mo kilala. Tapos research participant mo siya. So you need to be sensitive. Baka naman ayaw niya mag-participate, yet you are forcing the person to continue. Okay? So you need to be familiar with that. Ano pa? We do not contribute nor engage in research which contravenes international humanitarian law such as the development of methods intended to torture persons, develop prohibited weapons, or destruction of the environment. Okay? Later, babalikan natin to Magandang point to Brandon, no? Meron tayong separate discussion for that. Para malaman nila yung mga karapatan nila. Okay. Ngayon, going back to what I was saying. As a psychologist or psychometrician, you are not supposed to take part in research. Sabi ko nga kanina, kung alam mo na may matatapakan ka sa ginagawa mo, don't take part in that. Okay? Kunyari, yung research na yan, gagawa kayo ng panibagong drug that will, uh, for example, pero hindi nyo na e pero yung drug na yan can be used to manipulate somebody. Kunyari, may may bagong drug na if you if a person will take this drug nagigi easily suggestible and what if that's a date rape drug diba so we are expected to stay away and to discourage not only discourage but to raise awareness about things like this okay methods of torture okay a psychologist a psychometrician is not supposed to take part in the study in a study we're in you are developing a way to torture somebody, may it be physically or psychologically. Okay? Ganyan kasi nung panahon ng World War II eh. May mga pinag experimentohan ang mga Nazi against their will. So, nowadays, if you're doing something like that, okay, that is considered unethical. You are not only violating the code of ethics, pati mga international humanitarian law na ba-violate mo rin. Hindi natin alam sino magpo-prosecute niyo pagdating sa ganyan, pero definitely may ginagawa kang masama. Hindi lang siya unethical, but it's also illegal. Okay? Meron kasi, kasing tinatawag na ano, Declaration of Helsinki na pinoprotektahan yung mga karapatang pantao. Ayan, maganda to example. No? Little Albert, sabi nga ni Padparad siya. Okay? I hope I said that correctly. Okay? Ayan. Okay, and last points regarding the, the rights and dignity. It's our duty to ask participants about any factors that could bring forth potential harm, such as pre-existing medical conditions, and to detect, remove, or correct any foreseeable and desirable consequences prior to research proper. Ibig sabihin na ito, kunyari sa isang research, responsibility mo kunyari while giving the informed consent. Meron po ba kayong sakit sa puso? Meron po ba kayong psychological condition? Kasi, kunyari, recovering siya from depression. Tapos, because of the research, kunyari, ipapakwento mo. Kunyari, ito ay isang rape survivor, ipapakwento mo. Because of that, bumalik yung depression or bumalik yung PTSD symptoms niya na supposedly na-overcome na niya. Ngayon, sasagutin mo yung pagpapagamot sa kanya. 
itatandaan niyo na kapag na, na kapag naka-trigger ang research method ninyo ng psychological distress or baka naman pwede rin naman physical condition kunya rin inatake siya dahil sa mga pinagtatanong ninyo na unethical sa sagutin niyo yun. Okay? So you need to be aware of that. Medyo maraming gray areas pagdating doon sa sinabi ko about psychological condition. Pero here are some things to remember. If, pwede rin naman kasi na wala siyang psychological disorder before, pero during the research, doon siya na-develop. Yun, sasagutin nyo talaga yun. Kasi kung hindi naman siya nag-take part in that research, di ba? Hindi siya magkakaroon ng disorder na yan. Eh. Other than, pero, sir, paano kung matagal na siyang may depression and then, hindi wala namang enough evidence to say na na-trigger siya during the research. And wala tayong basihan para sabihin na lumala or whatever in depression. Talagang matagal na siyang nandun. No? In those cases, hindi mo siya sagutin. Ang sasagutin mo kung napalala mo yung depression niya, kung bumalik dahil sa research ninyo, or kung wala siyang depression, biglang nagkaroon ng depression. So, kaya napakalaga to know the pre-existing conditions of the person. Tsaka huwag kang gagamit ng method that you know will trigger the person. Baka naman yung experiment mo is about manunood ka ng clips ng nagbabarilan. Eh paano kung survivor pala ito ng gera? Diba? Next, to ensure that participants' rights are protected, we seek independent and sufficient ethical review of the possible risks of our research may pose to them. O tanong, no? feel free to comment. In your school, are there ethics reviewers? Do you have a practice like that? Like that? Kasi ako, in the school where I teach right now, as a thesis professor, alam ko that before the data gathering, the students need to submit their paper, their questionnaires, and all other supporting documents to our university ethics committee com composed of experts. Okay, without their go signal, the students cannot move forward to the data collection. Ayan, yes po. Tsaka maganda yan dahil, and maganda na independent sila. Okay, aside from the advisor, aside from the panelists, maganda na independent sila. Okay? Hindi yung kayo-kayo lang. Kasi yung kayo-kayo lang, baka may group thing. So dapat, it, they should be independent. Okay. Um, as I was saying, so, Maganda rin yun kung meron kayong ganyan sa school dahil isang part kasi ng publication dumaan dapat sa research ethics. Eh. So kapag dumaan yung paper ninyo sa research ethics committee at maganda yung paper ninyo, okay, publish about yan. Okay? So sa panahon ngayon, marami ng studyante, okay, ang dami ng studyante na undergrad na nagpa-publish ng research paper. Okay. What else? Oh, ito na, informed consent. So, always remember, informed consent is important. In psychology, nabanggit na natin yan. Yes, ah, yes, not yesterday. The, the other day, i-contextualize natin sa research. Number one, we make sure that consent form is translated in language or dialect that the participants understand. We will take reasonable measures to guarantee that the information was understood. Ayan, dapat Kung ano yung lingwaheng pinili na iintindihan nung, nung participant mo, nung subject mo, it, isasalin mo dun yung informed consent. Kung ano nakasulat. Kasi remember, this is a legal contract. If somebody signing a legal contract na hindi nila naiintindihan, you have to assess, valid pa ba yung pinirmahan niya? Okay? So ang informed consent, para siyang contract. No, para siyang kontrata. So dapat naiintindihan niya. Kasi baka this person is saying yes to, to something na hindi naiintindihan. Baka napipilitan lang. Okay. So kami, ginagawa namin, depende sa preferred language ng participant, we give them kung ano yung version na informed consent na mas maiintindihan nila. Okay. Pangalawa, the same applies for the questionnaires ha, and the questions. So it doesn't make sense that hindi na nga niya pinili yung English na informed consent, ibibigay mo pa yung English na questionnaire. Diba? You know that very much from psych assessment, kung ano yung mga possible problems with. Hindi naiintindihan yung tanong. Diba? 
When we conduct research with persons below 18, we obtain informed assent from them and informed consent from their parents or guardian. Um, for example, sa educational psychology. Okay, ako kasi favorite ko sa psychology educational. Eh. Napansin yung mga research ko puro about sa mga students, no? that's educational side. If you're dealing with minors, ang ginagawa sa ibang bansa ganito, there are two documents. The first document is signed by the parent. The other document is signed by the student. So there are two versions of the consent form. Okay? So hindi lang yung magulang, pati yung anak nag-consent. And it's also in writing. Ganon yung practice, kunyari sa China, ng mga kakilala kong scientists, psychologists who are working in, in China as researchers. When we conduct research with adult participants who have difficulties in comprehension or communication, we obtain informed consent from family members. I think that is self-explanatory. Ah, okay. Kung hindi siya makasign, kunyari meron siyang isang disability, uh, acceptable na recorded. As long as, syempre, dapat papayag din siya na i-record yung voice niya. Okay, kung hindi, edi... Wala tayong magagawa doon. No? We have to really look for another participant. Or thumb mark. Possible then thumb mark as alternatives. Okay? Sige. So with that being said, ano yung mga specifics? Or pwedeng yung ano nila, ano tawag dito yung representative nila, yung four. Alam niyo yung four, no? Yung representative nila, yung pumirma para sa kanila. May witnesses siya. Okay? Na yung representative ay pumirma on their behalf. Okay. Ano pa? Other guidelines? Sa informed consent, dapat nakasulat ng mga to. Okay? The purpose of the research expected duration and procedures, kung matagal, sabihin niyo, Kung saglit lang, sabihin niyo pa rin. Okay? Except if deception is part of the study. Kunyari, ang pinakamatagal na research na nasalihan ko took 90 minutes and the researchers were honest about it. Okay. Pangalawa, mutual responsibilities. As a researcher, what are my responsibilities? As a participant, what are your responsibilities? Letter C. So may nagtanong nito kanina. The right to decline and withdraw from the research once the participation began. Baka kasi akala nila once they signed the consent form, wala nang balikan. Hindi naman sa ganun. Pwede pang umatras. And we accept if hindi na nila gusto mag-participate without any consequences. With that being said, look at letter D. What are the perceivable consequences of declining? Dapat wala. Dapat walang consequences. Kung meron man, kunyari ganito, in an experiment, in a clinical trial, posibleng by withdrawing, kunyari, this is about vaccine, ang possible consequence yan, edi hindi ka mababakunahan. No, pwedeng ganun, no? So, since the, the study is about vaccines, eh, yun yung consequence niya kung mag-withdraw ka from the study eventually. Kunyari, naka-first dose ka lang, wala kang second dose. So, kailangan the researchers doing the vaccine or the research about the vaccine should declare that. Pero kung ayaw talaga niya, we have to respect that. Pero dapat alam niya yung consequence. Kasunod, foreseeable factors that may be expected to influence their willingness to participate such as risk, discomfort, adverse effects. So, kunyari, in this research, pag-uusap, kunyari, a study about mga namatayan ng anak. Pag-uusapan ninyo, kunyari, kung ano yung naramdaman nila nung namatay ang anak nila. That can be a factor in their willingness to participate. So, you have to declare that. Kasi baka hindi niya alam na yung pinapasok pala niya, pag-uusapan ninyo yung pagkamatay ng anak niya. Sabihin niya, kung alam ko lang, then, hindi ako sasali. That's your responsibility. Inform them about it. Diba? Parang contract talaga. What else? How to rescind. No, ano po yung rescind? Kung baga, how to cancel. Okay. Paano babawiin? Kunyari, ayaw mo na. Who to contact? Who can you inform? Or you can inform one of the researchers, one of the research assistants. Okay. By the way, kung magbago isip niya, ay, sasali na pala ako ulit. Payaga naman ninyo. Baka naman sabihin, ay, ay, sabi, di ba sabi mo, ayaw mo na, pabago-bago ka, wag naman ganun. May attitude ka. <laughs> okay, wag ganun. If they want to join again, then let them join again. Okay, what else? 
any perspective any perspective research benefits o, ano yung makukuha mo from this o may aminin mo kung may incentive Dati may nasalihin ako research, all participants are given 100 pesos. Yun, isa yun. What else? The indirect benefit of knowing you contributed to the science of psychology is something you can also declare. Okay? Ano ba yung mga benefits? Be honest, ano yung kapalit? Kung wala kayong ipamimigay na, na chocolate, okay, don't promise that you will give them chocolate. Baka naman sinasabi niyo, join our research for chocolates. Ay, out of stock na po. <laughs> Wag ganun na. <laughs> okay. Ayan, raffle. Baka naman sinasabi niyo, baka sinasabi niyo, may student here. San kita naging student? Hindi ko na maalala. No? <laughs> okay. Baka naman san binin niyo may raffle, may five winners. Tapos yung five winners, kayong limang researcher. So panlilin lang yan, panloloko yan. Kung to contact for questions, o dapat yan may ganyan, may email, may contact number, okay? And contact details of mental health professionals in case participants experience distress. So, good, um, for example, you can refer them, kunyari, to the nearest psychiatric services provider if meron talagang mangyayari na hindi ninyo, na, na, for example, that could have been a consequence of participating in the study. So, ganun yan, Okay? Ah, kala ko studyante ko sa school. Ayan. <laughs> okay, pero anyway, lahat kayo ay studyante ko. No? Maski sa school pa or hindi. Okay. Ano pa? Ito. Self-explanatory na to pero tatandaan natin kung magre-record tayo, dapat may consent din. Nakalagay din yan sa informed consent. Sineparate kasi napakahalaga. Okay. We, if we, were, we are going to record voice, it's an ethical na hindi niya alam that the voice is, not, is being recorded. Kailangan alam niya yun. Okay. Except, may except ha. Pwede nang hindi kumuha na informed consent. May nagtanong na ito na nag-lecture ako ng DevSite two Saturdays ago. Ngayon ko nalalaman saan ko nakuha yung sagot ko. Dito pala sa Code of Ethics. Sabi, unethical ba yun, sir? Kunyari, observational study. Tapos hindi niya alam na ini-study siya. Tapos walang consent. Well, according to this, not totally. Pwede hindi ka magbigay ng informed consent form to the person if the study is observational. Sabi ng letter A, given na hindi ma-identify kung sino siya. Kunyari, while you are studying the clip, kunyari, nakablur yung muka, ganun. O kaya naman, hindi niyo ipapakita kung kanina-kanina yung mga videotape, yung mga video clip. So you just have to protect the identity of the person and the person's identity should not be identified by anybody. Kailangan anonymous siya. Okay. Ano pa? The research des- if the research design includes deception, yan, pwede kang hindi magbigay na informed consent. Kung may deception, given na after the study, during the debriefing, kukunin mo yung informed consent. So, pwede rin yun. Kunyari, experimental, tas may deception. Hindi niya alam na ini-study pala siya. Well, during the debriefing, you have to get their consent. Kaya, tama ito. Yung mga social experiment counts under yung sa example ko kanina. Okay. Ano pa? Ano pa? Um, going back sa debriefing. Paano yung kunyari? Sabi niya sa debriefing. Ah, nag-take part pala ako sa study. Hindi ko alam. Pwede huwag niyo ako isali sa data ninyo. I don't give my consent. Wala kang magagawa kailangan hindi mo isali ang participant na yon in the study. You have to um, you have to respect yung right nila to withdraw. Ito, no? Offering inducement. Anong inducement? Mga incentive, GCash, load, merienda, lunch, ano pa, voucher sa SM, sa Watsons. Okay, yan yung inducements. May mali dito, no? Inform, psychologists inform participants. Of, you just ignore that. Just look at number one and two. Okay. Ah, wag, nyo, wag nyo na tanongin kung bakit. No, wag nyo na tanongin kung bakit. Okay. Kung bakit ayaw. Kasi mapipressure siya. Okay. May naalala tuloy ako, pero baka walang time eh. Okay. Parang, yeah, yeah. Next time, ne, mamaya ako na lang ikwento. May naalala ako bigla. 
no? I mess up somebody's experiment because of a because of a confounding factor. Next time ko na ikwento, baka mamaya, no? Okay. Anyway, about inducements, number one, we fairly compensate participants for their time, energy, and knowledge unless such compensation is refused in advance. Kunyari ganito, sir, magre-research po kami about mga, mga taxi driver, i-interviewin namin. The interview is expected to last for two hours. Do you know what your teacher will say about that? You need to compensate them kasi yung two hours na kinakausap nyo sila, binabiyahe na nila yan. If they earn, for example, sabihin natin, all in all, 1K, 1.5, magkano man in those two hours, babayaran nyo sila dun sa nalubit na. Diba? Okay? If, for example, ako, sumali ako sa experiment na dalawang oras, ang ano sa akin, reward sa akin, binigyan ako ng tasa. Siyempre naman, ang hirap nung ginawa ko, no? Kung ibibigyan lang ako ng isang fita no or ng skyflakes parang unfair naman 'yun. Diba? So dapat fairly compensated. Okay? Unless mag-refuse yung participant. Please don't compensate. Me. In those cases, wag piliting tanggapin kasi siya na yung nagsabi na ayaw niya. Okay. Pwede namang thank you okay kung nasa usapan ninyo na walang compensation. Kung incentive, dapat, ano yun, dapat well compensated. Okay. Number two, we make reasonable efforts not to offer undue or excessive inappropriate reward for research participations. Kunyari, napakalaki, nakaka, nakaka, ano siya, nakaka-entice. Kunyari, bibigyan mo siya ng, ano ba, exempted na siya sa final exam. Napakalaking incentive nun na kahit ayaw naman niya, mapipilitan siya. Yun yung number two. Okay. Or, another example, yung ganito, ayaw niya mag-participate, pero sabi mo, tulungan mo na ako, isa na lang kulang ko, gagraduate na ako. What you're doing is, parang minamanipulate mo siya, that if you don't help me, I will not graduate. Di ba? Para namang, para namang ano na yan, no? excessive na siya. Na, ayaw talaga niya, pero parang napipilitan na lang siya kaya. Depende kung pumayag naman si participant if may compensation or kahit wala. No? Um, I think you're referring to the... Yeah. Depende yan sa usapan ninyo. Na depende yan sa usapan ninyo. Okay. okay. Research participation of clients, students, and subordinates. When we conduct research with our clients, kunyari, you're a, you're a counselor, you're a therapist at the same time you are conducting research. Students or subordinates, we do not coerce them. O baka naman, o lahat ng hindi magpa-participate, minus 30 sa exam. Huwag na kayo magpakita sa akin kasi pagsak na kayo lahat. That's coercion. You are not respecting their autonomy. You are forcing them. Rather, we inform them about their right not to participate and we do not reprimand or penalize them. Actually, napansin nyo, meron pa, may napansin pa akong wala pa sa Code of Ethics. Maybe in the next revision, they will include this. Going back to the one earlier. I think. Do you think we should also include compensation for research assistants? No? Sino yun? Yung mga estudyante yung tumutulong sa teacher. It should be, they should be well compensated. Depende sa usapan ninyo. Kasi baka ang bayad sa'yo baka ang bayad sa'yo, 10 piso kada oras. Tapos, since estudyante ka, akala mo malaki na yan, pumatol ka. Tapos, ang nangyayari ngayon, ang nangyayari ngayon, yung trabaho ng researcher, ikaw yung sumasalo. So dapat, nandito rin yung sa Code of Ethics that we shall fairly compensate our research assistants. Now, kapag research assistant ba, sir, automatically co-author, depende sa usapan ninyo. Ibang usapan na yun. If you promise authorship, then kailangan to pa rin mo yun. Pero kung ang usapan ninyo, assistant lang siya, babayaran naman, then okay lang na hindi siya co-author. Okay. Paano po i-address pag si prop nang gaganyan? Minsan kasi ang hirap eh. No? Kapag, ang hirap kasi isumbong kapag prof kasi baka gantihan ka. Okay? Pero maybe you can raise that 
ano concern to their superior like to the chair or to the dean diba kasi lahat naman tayo may superior may boss tayo who will you know give us corrective feedback if unethical na tayo okay ano pa oh, yan deception psychologists do not conduct a study involving deception unless they have determined that the use of deceptive te- techniques is justified by the study scientific uh, prospective scientific educational or applied value and that effective non-deceptive alternative are not feasible so in other words you're only supposed to do deception if wala uh, if sure ka not only through deception you will be able to get quality data yun yung ibig niyang sabihin okay kumbaga last resort na si deception acceptable siya as long as kung may deception laging tatandaan dapat merong debriefing pero tatandaan din about deception psychologists do not deceive participants about research that is reasonably expected to cause pain baka may deception tapos kokuryentehin pala ibang klase ibang usapan na yan okay it is our duty to explain any deception as an integral feature of design and conduct of an experiment to those who participated in research as soon as possible so as soon as matapos yung data gathering we should explain to them why there was a deception okay not later than the end of data gathering meaning as soon as possible you explain to them the purpose of the study Ayan, maganda rin naman yan. Kausapin mo muna si Prof. Yun nga lang mahirap kapag di ka pinakinggan. No? So, if the practice continues, we'll go back to the other ethical principles. Maybe that's the time that we raise it to the authorities. Ayan, debriefing. How do we debrief? We debrief by informing the participants that they have contributed to the body of knowledge and we make sure that they also learn something. So when you do the briefing, it's also good to ask, so anong natutunan mo from this? Hindi lang yung kung ano yung natutunan natin, pero kung ano yung natutunan nila. Maganda rin itanong yan. And we give participants an opportunity to obtain the nature, results, and conclusion. If they want to know the results of the research, it's our duty to communicate it to them bilang kapalit ng pag-participate nila. We also take steps to correct misconceptions. For example, may mga misconceptions sila about psychology, about your research. Okay? You need to correct that. Dati naalala ko, may study kami nung college ako. May, may deception kasi yon. Tapos, hindi ko nakikwento for the interest of time. Pero alam niyo ano nangyari? Pag, paglabas nila, sabi, ni, sabi nila, alam mo, sinasayi ko lang tayo ng mga psychology students na to. <laughs> okay? So, parang nag-guilty naman ako. Parang feel ko naman... Um, na paglaroan namin yung feelings nila. No? So, so in those instances, talaga responsibilidad mo to debrief them and to explain to them para hindi sila makaramdam ng mga ganong klaseng pakiramdam. Okay? Talagang nag-guilty ako noon no, nung narinig ko yun. Parang feel nila pinaglaroan sila. No? So, nag-consensya talaga ako. No? Okay. What else? Ayan, sabi ko nga, no, with that, um, when participants' trust may have been lost due to incomplete disclosure, okay, or temporarily leading participants to believe that the research had a different purpose, meaning if we lost their trust, we seek to reestablish their trust. Kasi baka ang mangyari, they will no longer trust psychology students, psychologists, at lahat ng may kinalaman sa psychology. When we become aware that our research procedures have harmed a participant, we act to correct that. And I already told you how to do that. Diba? We may need to refer them to a professional who can help them deal with a problem. And then, kailangan our part is sasagutin natin yung mga damages na kinos natin. If after debriefing, the participants decided to withdraw their data, we shall respect and grant their requests. Yeah, nabanggit ko na rin siya kanina. The participants have the right to appeal that their own data, including recordings, be destroyed. So kailangan i-declare mo, how long will you will you keep the data? One year, six months, two years. And by that time, you should 
okay, destroy the data if that is what was promised. Reporting research results. But when we say reporting, it can be in a conference, in a defense, in a symposium, or in a research paper. Here are the guidelines. Una, when reporting res results of research activities, we will use language that is appropriate and comprehensible. Okay, kunyari, ire-report mo yung result, yung result ng research sa mga magsasaka. Baka naman, you're using jargon para hindi nila magets totally para ma-manipulate mo yung situation to your advantage. Okay, so kailangan comprehensible to our target population. Pangalawa, we consult with groups, organizations, or communities being studied the findings of our research to increase the accuracy. For example, you did a research about indigenous people. Alamin mo, mag-research ka. Sino ba mga commission sa Pilipinas in charge of the welfare of indigenous people? Maybe you would like to coordinate with them to make sure that your findings are indeed accurate. Kasi baka isa itong misinterpretation. Okay? So walang masama kung magtatanong. Okay, if you do research, for example, with LGBT, maybe you would like to coordinate with the LGBT special interest group of the PAP, kung saan may mga psychologists tayo who protect the rights and welfare of mga kapatid nating LGBT, mga kababayan nating um, parte na LGBT. So you may want to ask the right people. What else? We are cautious when reporting results of our research regarding vulnerable groups and communities. Yun nga, para nga hindi mo misinterpret. Kasi baka tinitwist, di ba, yung findings. Lalo na, daw, na nyo, misuse and the development of social policy. What if, kunyari, you're doing a research and then a local politician will twist the research result to their advantage. Baka ina-advance niya sarili niyang political gains. So hindi yun maganda. Okay? We should be there to correct yung mga possible misuse ng ano natin, ng paper natin. In a research involving children, we are cautious when discussing the results of the results with parents, guardians, or teachers, and we make sure that there's no misunderstanding. I think that's very self-explanatory. I would like to highlight the next one. We do not fabricate data. O sino dito nagpabricate ng data para makapasa? Ako, may kilala ako eh. Madalas ang pinapabricate quantity. Kasi nga numbers. Ako, may kilala ako. Nagpabricate ng quality. Patay tayo dyan. Ah, na, pero napakagaling. No? Ang hirap eh. Ang hirap dayain ang quality. Diba? So, it took, you know, it took effort. No? Pero hindi yung tama. Diba? People may be tempted to, to fabricate. For example, to graduate or to earn a promotion. Because when you do research, you can earn promotion. That can be your reward. That you work for it. But what if dinaya pala? Ako nung ginawa ako nung time na yon. Hindi ko pa kasi alam yung research ethics. Eh. Kaya wala akong ginawa. Sadly. Okay. If I only knew, I would have taken the right measures. What else? Um, wag ka, wag kayong mand mandadayan ng research para ma-promote kayo. Masama yun. No? If we discover errors in our published data, kunyari nag-publish ka, tapos na ngayon mo lang nag-gets, mali pala yung statistical analysis ko. We act quickly to correct our errors. How? In a correction. Pwede kang sumulat sa editor. We would like to correct the data in our table number one instead of blah 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 we should it should be properly interpreted as this and that fighting ganon even the best researchers make mistakes as long as you're willing to admit your mistakes okay so ang tawag doon letter to the editor ano pa retraction ko alam mong mali talaga yung pinagsasabi mo doon i-withdraw mo yung paper tanggalin niyo online Kasi alam mo palang mali eh. Eratong, I'm not so familiar how you do this. Siguro parang letter to the editor lang yan. Ay, hindi ko alam to ah. 
or other appropriate publication means. Ang pinakaalam ko lang, either yung magle-letter ka sa editor or ipapatanggal mo yung paper for the reason na alam mo na mali yung mga nakalagay. Okay. Ano pa? Um, plagiarism. We do not present portions of another's work or data as their own even if the work or data source is cited occasionally. You do not use your colleagues, your students, your friends' work as your work. Pag plagiarism tawag to. It's unethical. Kunyari, you will plagiarize somebody's thesis as your own study to earn a promotion. Ako may kilala, ako na-promote daw after mag-plagiarize ng paper. Okay. So, hindi yun nararapat. Okay. Dapat yung mga ganyang behavior, ipinapaalam sa authorities. Okay. Investigation will be conducted at malalaman kung ano yung totoo. Okay. You do not claim na yung hindi mo naman ginawa ay sa'yo. Hindi mo, hindi ka magpapagawa ng thesis sa recto. Yun, bawal din yun. You're claiming it to be your output, pero hindi naman pala. So, of course, no, this is not only unethical according to the PAP Code of Ethics, but also yung rules ng school, baka pwedeng maging reason yun for you to be terminated or even or demoted or terminated. Siguro nga, baka ano na to, no? Baka termination na ito. Hindi ko alam. I'm not so familiar with school rules regarding this. Okay. Kunya, pati sa estudyante, no? you, can be, you can get a failing mark for plagiarism. Okay. Kung baga, sa lahat ng kasalanan sa research, yung plagiarism, yung diretsyo sa puso ng isang research teacher. Pag tumusok yan, tagus. So yan yung pinakaayaw namin nangyayari. Kasi dugot pawis yan ang researcher. In relation to that, publication credit. Psycho credit meaning authorship. When do you claim that something is yours? Una, psychologists take responsibility in credit, including authorship credit, only for work that they have actually performed or to which they have sub substantially contributed. Kunyari, pinalila mo, estudyante mo, o gawa ka ng research, ito yung gagawin, tapos nilagay mo yung pangalan mo sa authors. Parang ang daya naman nun. Except na lang kung talagang, even if, siya yung majority ng work, baka naman marami kang na-share. Yun justifiable pa eh. Pero kung may mga alila ka, may mga ghostwriter ka, tapos yung pangalan mo yung nakasulat doon, that is unethical. Okay. What else? Principal authorship means kung sino yung unang pangalan before the et al. It marami. Yung unang pangalan, may it be Montano et al. or whatever, should accurately reflect the scientific and professional contribution regarding of their relative status. Meaning, ang pagka-arrange ng pangalan ng author sa isang research paper is based on sino may pinakamaraming ginawa. Sa school, ginagawa nating alphabetical kasi baka mag-away pang estudyante kung sino yung first author. So to be safe, make it alphabetical. Pero in research, it has to be the first author is the leader. Regardless of their status. Kunyari, co-researcher ninyo si Dean. Si Dean, walang ginawa. Tapos, baka naman sabihin niya, ako dapat first author. Eh bakit po? Kasi ako yung Dean. Sabi nga dito, regardless of their status. The name should be arranged based on their contribution. Okay. Look at this. Mere possession of an institutional position, such as being a chair, does not justify authorship. Kunyari, chairman ako. Tapos, you're doing a research then mapapublish na siya. Hindi ko pwedeng sabihin, ilagay mo yung pangalan ko. Eh sir, wala kang ginawa. Chairman ako eh. That's an ethical. Hindi porket boss ka, author ka. Okay. Ano pa? Yan, di ba? Alam, alam nyo na ba yung mga to before yung discussion natin? Sana marami ko na siya share na kasi ang tagal ko na nagre-research. No? So, ang dami kong dinadaldal na yun. No? Okay. Publication credit. In a multiple authored article that is partly 
or substantially based on a student's thesis or dissertation, we shall give appropriate publication credit to the student. When the article is mainly based on the student's thesis, we credit the student with primary authorship. Kung kunyari, nag-collab si estudyante, si panelist, at si advisor. And the paper is mainly based on the student's thesis, they should be the first author. So, if a thesis will be published, yung pangalan ng estudyante or mga estudyante ang nauuna. Ang pangalan ng teacher sa dulo. Kasi I've heard of cases wherein it is the advisor na yung pangalan niya yung nilalagay niya sa simula. Hindi ko sinasabing bawal yun all the time. Kailan po allowed na yung teacher yung first name if the teacher is the leader? Kunyari, hindi ito thesis. Nagkasundo lang kayo as a group, a teacher and a group of students will do a research. Siya yung leader ninyo. E di siya yung first author. But if this is a thesis, the student should be the first author. Ano yung commissioner? Hindi ko alam yung commissioner. Ano yan? Parang may babayaran ka magsulat. Ako hindi ko na maalala yung mga actual questions. May naalala lang ako about paano kung may co-researcher ka na student to answer your question, you know. Hindi ko na maalala how it was asked, pero may naalala lang ako about collab with student, which is why I always discuss this. Ano pa? Sharing data for verification. It is our duty to share and not withhold our data to other competent professionals who seek to verify our research result. Meaning, dapat open access yung data natin. Kung merong isa pang researcher who would like to double check our conclusions, if it's correct, then it's our duty to share our, our data to them. Okay? Kaya nga, when I write research papers, sa dulo, may nakalagay doon, not only me, but also, requirement kasi siya sa journal. Okay, requirement siya sa journal that, hmm, how do you say this? The data can be made available by from the author upon reasonable request. So, pwede mo i-share yung data to other professionals who would like to double check the accuracy of your findings. Okay? As long as your request is reasonable. As long as hindi mo gagamitin yung data kung saan-saan. Tsaka pag nag-share ka ng data, dapat hindi malalaman yung pangalan ng respondents. Okay. Ganun siya. No. Alright? Sige. We'll discuss, as our next part, we'll discuss um, ethics and therapy. Okay. May tanong kayo. Karamihan ay didiscuss natin sa therapy as some resemblance with what we discuss in other parts. Kaya I think mabilis ito. Okay? Tatandaan lang in doing therapy, okay, aside from assessment, aside from research, we also perform therapy. Okay? Ano to? Ah, ano yan? Yung, alam ko tinanggal na yung paper na yun, yung co-author niya si Chuck GPT. Tinanggal na siya. Hmm. I-check niyo yung journal guidelines if the journal allows you getting help from ChatGPT. Okay? Because there are journals who are strict with this na any kind of help from an AI will not be accepted. So you need to check with their guidelines. And in most journals, alam ko, a chatbot is not supposed to occupy authorship hindi siya itatrato na parang isang author. Yun yung guideline, yun yung common guideline. Okay. Alright, sige. There you go. In therapy, just like in, in other things that we do, we give our client or we ask for our client's informed consent. No? We inform them in advance the nature of of the treatment and the anticipated course of therapy. Like, gano siya katagal? Will this last for several weeks, for several sessions? Will it last for a year? And so on. And what are the potential benefits or risks of undergoing therapy? Are there conflicts of interest if applicable? 
yung fees o dapat sinasabi na yan doon sa informed consent pa lang kasi nga it's a contract, no? Okay? So they need to be informed magkano yung babayaran nila. Kailan sila magbabayad tuwing kailan, di ba? Third party involvement. Sino pa ba yung meron ba mga third parties na involved dito, no? Kunyari in doing teletherapy, the common third party is the internet service provider. So ayun, part sila sa third party involved. And also clients um commitments and limit of ano yung mga ano mo responsibility mo bilang client kunyari kailangan kapag pinag-usapan ninyo na magkikita kayo on July July 5 yun dapat mag-fulfill niya yun so you need to inform them o kunyari magka-cancel ka ng session dapat you inform our clinic at least 24 hours before the session something like that okay so kailangan ma-inform sila about sa mga rules niyo na ganun Okay? Um, yeah, kasi when you schedule a session, the the therapist or in the therapist will be expecting you. So kailangan kung magka-cancel ka. Dapat Okay, it's clear in the informed consent na dapat magpapa mag, magbibigay ka ng heads up early. Okay? What else? Limits of confidentiality. You know that very much kunyari kapag Um, somebody is going to get hurt, somebody's gonna hurt himself or herself, and so on. Before, I had a student who was suicidal, so I had to inform the uh, the, the guidance office about it. No, I, I cannot provide the treatment myself because, as you know, that will be a form of multiple relationship. So I had to refer the student to the guidance office. So possible that this person would hate me for revealing such confidential information. Pero kasi, um, buhay niya na yung nakataya doon. If the person loss, you know, loses a great amount of, of blood, pwede siyang mamatay. So, I had to reveal that information to the guidance office who in turn will perform actions to prevent the death of the student. ba diba? So, isa yun sa mga mabibigat na experience ko before as a teacher. Okay, what else? We respect the client's right to commit to, terminate, or withdraw from therapy. That is very much self-explanatory. Okay, next. In instances where the therapist is still undergoing training, for example, OJT, okay, OJT, and the therapist is not yet a psychologist, we discuss this matter with our client, meaning we are honest with them. We tell them that the one doing the therapy is not yet a psychologist but this is for training purposes. So kailangan alam nila yon. Do not hide that, that, that fact from the client. Huwag kayong magsisinungaling na psychologist ako and I will be your therapist today. Bawal yun. Okay? And also, we need to assure them that supervision will be provided. That even though a student is providing the therapy, um, they are under the supervision of a psychologist. Diba? A licensed professional. And a psychometrician's We are prohibited from the practice of therapy unless in emergency situations. Pero tatandaan, uh, while we are allowed to do this, no, we should also, you know, sa part natin, alamin natin, will I do more harm than good if I will practice therapy in an emergency situation? Or kailan ba mas better na mag-refer na lang? Okay? So there you go. What about the other, you know, guidelines? In terms of well-being, we do not provide services to our clients in instances where when we are physically, mentally, and emotionally unfit. Oh yeah, emergency situations include, for example, disasters. Yeah, okay. So that's an example of an emergency situation. Okay, going back to this. Um, o oh, kaya naman, mga, mga man-made na mga ano, crisis, like gera, for example. So, ayun. Okay? What else? Ayan. Eto. You know this very much, yung una. If we think that we are emotionally unfit to provide therapy, then we should refrain from doing so. ba diba? Parang, how would you care for another person if you couldn't even care for yourself? So, that would be you know that would lead to that could possibly worsen the client's condition instead of helping them get better diba so if hindi natin kaya because we are psychologically unfit maybe it would be much better to refer that client of ours to another competent therapist okay yun na yung naging problema with the covid-19 
maraming nag-practice ng psychotherapy although hindi naman pala nila alam yung psychotherapy. So, yes, when it's an emergency, um, dapat nung medyo pumupa na yung COVID, dapat nirefer na lang nila sa mga psychologist talaga na competent. Kasi wala naman nag-expect na napakahabang emergency pala ng COVID-19 pandemic. Diba? Umabot siya ng taon. Akala natin sa glit lang. So, you should also take steps. No? To, so, kunyari, alam mo na um, hindi ko na ata kaya to or this already beyond my limitations. So, i-refer na lang sila sa mga um, psychologists. Yeah, so, for example, those who were doing teletherapy during the hype of the pandemic. Okay? What else? We are responsible for learning and taking into account their beliefs, their practices, or customs. O kunyari, you're working with a client tapos sa religion nila, um, hindi, hindi expected yung mga ipapagawa mo sa kanya. So, you should, you know, be well aware of that. Okay? You should be aware of their values. You should be aware yung mga bawal sa kanila. Like, for example, what if bawal sa kanila mag-establish ng eye contact? What if dapat same sex? Kunyari, kung babae yung client, babae rin yung therapist. So, you should be well aware of that. Okay? Okay, so there you go. No? We do not recommend activities to clients that will cause harm to the self, others, and the environment. Okay, baka naman ang mga techniques na gagamitin mo will be, um, kunyari, so, um, I, I want you to be assertive by, by cursing five random people you meet at the streets. So hindi yun nararapat. No? Because that's a wrong way of, you know, helping your client to establish um, assertiveness. Diba? So we are promoting harm by doing so. Right? And also, for example, if alam mo na yung client mo, atheist, then don't tell them to pray. Diba? So dapat alam natin yung mga cultural differences na yan. For example, before, I had a professor na who shared something to us na yung mga kakilala niyang therapists are coming from a religion na hindi masyadong open sa LGBT. So, ang ginagawa nila, if their client ay LGBT, ethically, ginagawa nila, nire-refer na lang nila to other therapies because they know na magiging bias sila dahil sa mga paniniwala nila, hindi nila accepted ang mga bagay katulad ng pagiging, ano no, pagiging gay or lesbian and so on. So, i-refer na lang nila. Alam nila yung limitations ng values nila kaysa naman tanggapin nila as a client, then maging biased lang sila or may masabi pa sila na hindi maganda. So, I'm, I believe that be, they are being responsible for doing so. Diba? Napakagandang practice doon. Alam nila yung limitations nila na brought about nung ibang mga paniniwala nila. No? So, I think they're being responsible for doing that. I don't think mali yung ginagawa nila. Well, ganun kasi sa kanila. So, hindi rin naman natin sila mapipilit na ibahin yung paniniwala nila kasi ganun yung paniniwala nila eh. so we also have to respect that diba? what else? relationships we do not enter into a client-clinician relationship other than for professional purposes so pre- bawal ang multiple relationships okay also we do not allow so you will not enter a relationship with a client for example if you want to be friends with them if you want to be business partners with them, if you want to be in a relationship with them, dapat professional yung yung objective ninyo. Okay. Hindi siya ano, um, i- ibang relihiyon yun. Hindi ko nababanggit din. Okay. okay. We do not allow our professional, medyo conservative kasi sila, kaya, um, kaya yun yung paningin nila. No? So, hindi natin pwedeng impose that you should be more accepting to LGBT at the same time, tama yung ginagawa nila no? by, by simply referring um, their clients to other therapies na iba yung relihiyon, di ba? I think that is that is ano, no? responsible on their end. Okay? What else? Ayan. We do not allow our professional therapeutic relationships to be prejudiced by personal views we hold about lifestyle, gender, age, disability, sexual orientation, occupation, group membership, or regional group membership to be exact, beliefs and culture. So, bawal ang judgmental when it comes to mga bagay na ito. No? So, pangit naman nun, therapist ka, tapos um, nagdi-discriminate ka ng client. 
di ba? Kung, yun nga, kung, hindi mo, kung alam mo na mismatch yung values ninyo, yung mga pananaw mo sa mga pananaw niya, kunyari conservative ka about, kunyari, mga bagay katulad ng abortion, eh di much better to refer that person to another therapist. Kung alam ninyo na magka-clash yung values ninyo. Okay. What else? We maintain a professional relationship with our clients, avoiding emotional involvement that would be detrimental. So, bawal, for example, to enter into another relationship with them. And with that being said, we do not engage in sexual intimacies with our current clients. Bawal na bawal yan. No? Their relatives, their significant others. And tingnan nyo to, huwag nyo gagawin to, no? We do not terminate therapy to circumvent the standard. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Kunyari, hindi ka na-inform na bawal pala ang sexual relationship with a client. Sabi mo, o ganito gagawin ko. Ita-terminate ko yung therapy para maipagpatuloy namin ang pagmamahala namin. Ba masama yun. Huwag mong gagawin yun. No? Much better, just refer the person to someone else. What if wala ng available na therapist? Hindi naman ibig sabihin na magkabaliktad yung pananaw nyo that you cannot work with one another. Pwede pa rin naman, pero bawal ka mag-impose ng mga paniniwala mo. And you need to be conscious about your potential biases. Okay? So possible pa rin yun na magkaiba yung paniniwala ninyo as long as you work with the value system of the client and not your value system. Di ba? I hope I made sense. Okay? Hindi ko alam kung anong basis nila sa two years. no Pero that's the... Common rule. Siguro just to make sure na you really like each other. Kasi baka naman it's the spur of the moment. Kasi baka you're taking advantage of the client's weakness. Or baka naman you're just dependent to one another. Okay. Yan. Tama ito, no? So mga... Biktima ng abuse, hindi lang counseling kailangan nila. Tama ito. They also need justice. So sa mga abuse, survivors of abuse, hindi lang tutulungan din natin sila, for example, to coordinate with the authorities para mahanap, for example, yung gumawa ng abuse sa kanila. Diba? Kasi yan ay violation ng batas. Kung babae ito or bata ito, um, violation ito ng, ng ano tawag, vow seat. No, violence against women or children. Okay. Yan, once again, I will not provide a statement on on that okay, sa celebrity. Kasi nga, hindi ako sure kung during that time, siya ba yung therapist ng celebrity na yan or baka naman matagal na nilang terminate yung relationship. Okay. Baka naging issue lang siya kasi dati niyang psychologist. Pero what if during that time, hindi siya yung present psychologist and it had been years since they terminated therapy. Okay. So, I refuse to answer. <laughs> okay. What else? Now, competent practice. Okay. Just like what you've heard about, what I said about competence before, we keep up to date with the latest knowledge and scientific advancements to respond to changing circumstances. Okay. We carefully review our own need for continuing for professional development and engage in educational activities. For example, if you want to be competent in CBT, if you want to be competent in hypnotherapy, in gestalt therapy, in reality therapy, then you need to attend training. Okay? And you have to make sure that your current practice is updated rather than outdated. We responsibly monitor and maintain our fitness to provide therapy. What if wala ka sa tamang pag-iisip to provide therapy and you are providing therapy that is considered unethical? And look at this, when the need arises, we need to seek peer or colleague supervision. So sa mga pagkakataon na sa tingin natin, um, our, the case that we are handling is beyond our competence, we may need to seek further supervision if not refer the client. So sa mga cases we're in, parang... Feeling natin, kailangan natin ng tulong, call a friend, di ba? Huwag tayong magdadalawang isip na lumapit sa mga bosses natin or sa mga colleagues natin na alam nating um, expert sa area na yun or mas nakakaalam compared sa atin. What else? No? 
We ensure that referrals with colleagues are discussed and consented by our clients. Mahalaga to because I know somebody na na-refer ng therapist niya to another therapist. At nagulat na lang yung kilala ko, no? this person, I know, no? na sabi ng therapist mo, ako na daw magiging bagong therapist mo. So parang walang closure. If you're going to do a referral, you should talk about it with your client. Why you're doing the referral, you, know, you need to be honest about it. They need to, you know, be aware of it. Okay? Kasi ang pangit naman ng pakinggan, parang one day iba na yung psychologist mo at hindi ka nabigyan ng closure kung bakit iba na yung psychologist mo. Okay? Pag hindi po may yung client, um, kailangan kasing maipaintindi sa kanila. Ang problema dyan, posibleng dependent na yung client mo sa'yo. And that is not good. So, in that case, alam natin, yung judgment natin, alam kasi natin na mas magbe-benefit siya kung i-refer natin siya rather than itutuloy natin. Okay. So, yun. Huwag niyong gagawin yun, na. Okay. Huwag niyong gagawin yun. Kunyari, maging psychologist kayo and you will refer the person. Ang pangit nun para sa isang psychologist na ganun ka. No? Ako na pala yung bago mong therapist. Parang kung ikaw makakarinig nun, kasi in doing therapy, there should be ano, proper termination. Dapat may closure yan. Okay? What else? We ensure that the recipient of the referral is competent. Baka naman na-refer mo sa hindi magaling. Baka na-refer mo sa walang kaalam-alam. Okay? Ano pa? Yeah. Speaking of termination... We terminate therapy when we are quite sure that our client no longer needs therapy. Yan nga yung sinasa- tanong mo kanina, Jerusalem, no? Minsan, minsan kasi yung client, akala niya, attend lang siya ng attend, tapos gusto niya sa'yo. Pero ang totoo, hindi pala siya gumagaling. May mga times kasi that the client no longer needs therapy. Dependent lang kayo sa isa't isa. Okay, pangalawa, it's not likely to benefit from therapy. Alam mo na hindi na siya gumagaling. Would be harmed by continued therapy. Nagiging dependent na siya. You have to terminate it, refer them to someone else. Okay. In cases when therapy is prematurely terminated, katulad ng sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, we provide termination counseling. And we make reasonable efforts to arrange for an orderly and appropriate referral. Huwag niyong iwan sa area yung client niyo. Okay? Ako na pala yung bago psychologist mo. Okay? Pangit paking ganun. Hindi naman yung kasalanan ng bagong psychologist. Ang may kasalanan doon is the referring party. Okay. Alright? We can also terminate therapy when there is a reasonable evidence that there's imminent risk of being harmed by our client. Meaning, baka tayo yung masasaktan. May cases kasi na yung, kunyari, yung client mo, um, wala siya sa right frame of mind, tapos sabihin niya sa'yo na papatayin ka niya. Or papatayin ka ng tatay niya. Pwede ka mag-terminate ng therapy. Not for the client, but for you. Or, when the client does not comply with what is stipulated in the contract, hindi ka binabayaran ng client, may karapatan ka na i-terminate yung therapy. Or what has been agreed upon at the onset of the treatment. May karapatan ka to end the therapy. Pero remember na you should also end it properly. Okay, tama yan, no? So, as you've said that, okay, sakto yung pagkasabi mo because I'd like to end this part by saying this. At all times, We should protect the client, ourselves, and protect the profession. Pero kung may uunahin man tayo, always protect the best interest of the client. Okay. Maaga pa. No? Gusto ko sana mag-end mga 9.15, 9.20. Okay. Would you like us to discuss the what is considered illegal according to the psychology law. Et, kinons- diniscuss natin yung ethical. Would you like us to discuss what is considered illegal?
Yes. Okay, sige. This is uh, the last. Ito na exciting part. So kung meron ang ethical, meron ding illegal. No? May mga bagay na both ethical and legal. May mga bagay din naman na more legal than ethical. So today we're go. Hindi ko i-cover yung buong batas but kasi napakahaba nito. Before, in one school, I was invited to talk about this. Okay. So yun, kapag naghahanap kayo ng mga... Yeah, marami nagre-request ng IO, pasensya na ha. I'm not the right person for it. It will not be ethical if I will accept it. No? Kasi I will do more harm than good. I'm talking about something kasi na hindi ko alam eh. Kapag mag-discuss ako ng IO. Okay. Yan. Pasensya na. <laughs> okay. Test development, di ko pa alam kung kailan ko siya isasingit. Okay? Tapusin ko muna yung ano. Ang next na discussion natin will be about um, dev site. Middle adulthood and late adulthood. Ginawa ko na yung PowerPoint. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can just watch my previous videos. No, pasensya na kasi... There, are, there will definitely, there will be questions in IO that I will, that I will not be able to answer. Kasi hindi kasi ako IO psychologist. Eh. Kung IO psychologist ako, I will accept it. No? Pero yun, you can watch my previous videos na lang about Amot. Okay? Definitely, beyond the lessons, you will have concerns that are beyond my powers. And I'll, I'm being unethical if I will accept it. Okay? Kaya pasensya na sa mga nagre-request ng IO. Kung baga may kasabihan tayo, stay on your lane. Huwag kang lalayo sa linya mo. Don't talk about something na hindi mo alam or else you're doing more harm than good. Okay. Ayan. Okay? Sige. Okay. Now, we're going to talk about psychology law. Hindi ko didiscuss lahat dahil napakahaba nun. Okay? Ang layo ng pinas forward ko. Okay. Fast forward agad sa Article 6, Section 22. Kasi, we, ha we have to know these things before we talk about ano yung mga bawal. Okay. And I did discuss na ako sa assessment. No? Marami-rami na rin tayo na-cover. Yun nga lang, I cannot make it that frequent kasi may ano rin ako sa school. What do you call this? May mga ginagawa rin ako sa school ngayon kaya hindi ko siya mag magawa na more frequent. No, pero so far no lahat ng video natin psych assessment. Diba? Hindi ko lang ma-discuss yung mga psychological tests dahil hindi sila supposed to be discuss on a public ano no, platform because the lay public will know kung ano yung mga minimeasure ng test. Yun kasi bawal na yun ituro. Okay. All right, sige. Can you see my my PowerPoint? I believe so. No, I believe you can see it. Okay. Sige, sige. Um, let's talk about ano no. Fast forward tayo sa Article 6, Section 22. Sinasabi lang dito, kapag lisensyado ka, the psychologist or psychometrician shall be required to indicate his or her registration and PRC ID number and date of issue once the duration of validity including the professional tax receipt number on each document signed. Meaning, in every document you will sign as a psychometrician, dapat naka-affix dyan yung mga bagay na ito. Kaya nga, di ba, nakalagay license number, valid until, and so on. Katulad, kunyari, kapag nare-resetahan kayo ng doktor, nakalagay dyan yung mga details about them. Kasi what if you're claiming na license ka, pero hindi naman. What if you're claiming na na hindi expired license mo pero ito to expired pala license mo. Di ba? So yan yung una ninyo dapat malaman before we talk about yung mga bawal. Other than that, aside from the board exam, another way to practice psychology in the Philippines is through what we call a special permit. What is a special permit? A special permit may be issued by the board to the following and to the following only. Una, licensed psychologists or psychometricians from foreign countries who are internationally acknowledged specialists or outstanding experts in psychology. Kunyari, pupunta si Martin Seligman sa Pilipinas. Okay? Magpa-practice ng positive psychology in the Philippines. Then, imagine niyo pag-board examine niyo ba si Martin Seligman? No? 
Martin Seligman, kung gusto mo mag-practice sa Pilipinas, okay? Mag-board exam ka muna. Tapos imaginein mo, no? Ano ba? Sino ba dito yung S yung mga apelido? O yung mga S ang apelido? Kung sa Manila magtitake si Martin Seligman ng board exam, kasama niyo siya sa classroom. <laughs> imagine niyo, imagine that possibility. Di ba? So, you can be given permit to practice if una, ikaw ay kilalang psychologist from a foreign country. Acknowledge from, for your expertise. Pangalawa, you are a licensed psychologist or psychometrician from foreign countries whose services shall be, shall be free and offered exclusively to indigent patients in a particular hospital center or clinic. For example, may in-invite tayo galing sa ibang bansa, psychologist magpa-practice sa Pilipinas kasi nga, kunyari crisis, eh kulang tayo sa tao, nag tayo from a foreign country. Ayan, pwede rin sila mag-practice through a special permit. And finally, licensed psychologists or psychometricians from foreign countries employed as exchange professors. Alam niyo ba yan? Yung mga exchange professors, ipapadala sila sa ibang bansa to teach psychology. So in that case, hindi sila licensed sa Pilipinas, but they can be called licensed through a special permit. So yan. So far, wala akong kilala na nabigyan ng special permit. Pero may kilala akong, yun nga, like I mentioned last time, I know a foreigner who pass our board exam. So, well, yes, they can also take the board exam, no? pero madalas ang binibigay yung special permit. Ito kasi yung special permit, one year lang ito. Pero yung, pero yung board exam, every three years yung license ninyo. You renew it every three years. Yung special permit, every one year lang siya. Yun, every one year. Yun yung sagot dyan. Okay? Yun yung ating trivia for today. No? Sino ang mga foreign professionals in the Philippines na nag-take ng board exam. Ayun, i-research ninyo yun kung sino yun. Ayan. Oo naman, pinapatay nyo agad basta nasa libro eh. Buhay pa naman talaga si Martin Seligman. <laughs> okay, ganun tayo basta, na, basta nasa libro pinapatay agad. No? Masama yun. No? What else? So, ngayon, speaking of which, kailan naman masususpindi or pag sinabing revoke, makukuha yung lisensya mo. May, may kilala ba kayong kinuhanan ng lisensya? Ako wala pa naman, no? no? Pero possible yan. Sa ibang field nga may nakukuhaan ng lisensya. Na-confiscate. No? So, kailan masususpindi or marerevoke yung license mo? Here are the following criteria. Una, manifest physical or mental incompetence to render psychological services with reasonable skill or safety. Kunyari na mamasyente ka, tapos wala ka sa tamang pag-iisip. Your recommendations led to harm or even death of your client. That can be a reason for you to be suspended if not revoked. Anong malapit na meron baka ipapat ng grabe no? <laughs> okay, malapit na. Or malapit na magka-license, no? <laughs> okay, anyway. Ayun. O kanya rin no ikaw ay isang um nalulung ka sa droga. Tapos namamasyente ka at dahil wala ka sa tamang pag-iisip kung ano-ano yung nare-recommend mo sa mga kliyente mo, sa mga pasyente mo. Well, pwede ka masuspindi sa pinagagawa mo. Okay. What else? Professional misconduct or negligence to perform the performance of duties as a psychometrician kulang as psycho and psychologist. Hindi ko ata na type. O yan, professional misconduct. Kunyari, nagmumura ka sa testing room nilalait mo yung mga yung mga ano mo yung mga examinees mo no may mga masasamang salitang lumalabas sa bibig mo that is misconduct okay kung na videohan ka that's why if you will notice i am very careful kasi kung may masabi akong mali okay tatandaan niyo license ako at kung may masabi akong mali mahirap na Okay. Yan. Ito ay lifted sa psychology do. Hindi na siya sa code of ethics. Psychology do. Batas na ito. So hindi, huwag niyo babasta-bastahin ang batas. What else? Engaging in the practice of profession during your suspension. Suspended ka tapos namamasyente ka. Hindi lang yan unethical, illegal din yan. 
no illegal din yan no illegal din yan so nas, pinap, you are presenting yourself as a psychometrician or psychologist while suspended eto by the way yung bonus discussion na sinabi ko di ba hindi naman to part ng promise ko pero na cover natin what else eto na yung mga prohibited act, acts article 8 section 33 prohibited acts. Ito yung mga bawal illegally. Ito yung mga legally speaking, ito yung mga bawal. Una, no person shall engage in the practice of psychology or psychometrics nor represent himself as a licensed as a professional psychologist or psychometrician without a valid registration or valid PRCID. Meaning, you know, ang meaning neto, you are not supposed to put RPM or RSI after your name if you are not an RPM or an RSI or both. Okay, yun lang naman ibig sabihin yan. By doing so, you're acting sa illegal na paraan. Okay, may kilala ba kayong ganyan? At least ako wala. If I if ako may kilala ako na hindi license, eh di hindi nilalagay. Ganun yun, no? huwag mo ilagay kung hindi ka license, di ba? Kasi panluloko yung ginagawa mo. What else? Represent himself to be as a licensed and authorized practicing psychologist or psychometrician during the time that the certificate of registration and the PRCID was suspended or revoked. So kapag suspendido ka or kunyari kinuhaan ka ng lisensya, tatanggalin mo na rin yung RPM, RSI sa pangalan mo. Kasi hindi ka, technically you're not licensed. Or professional ID card without being renewed. Hindi mo pwedeng dugtungan yung pangalan mo na RPM kung expired na after 3 years yung lisensya mo. Illegal din siya. Kasi you're claiming to be a psychometrician tapos hindi ka renewed. Okay? Tapos kunyari nag-write ka pa ng psych report o bawal yun. No? Pumirma ka pa sa psych report tapos expired ka pala. No? So illegal yun considered sa batas natin. What else? No other, no person shall allow any person to use his certificate of registration and professional ID card for any purpose. Kung baga sa school, no lending of ID. Kunyari may kakambal ka, hindi pumasa sa board exam. Eh kamukha mo naman kakambal mo eh. Tapos pumunta ka sa Boracay para magpahinga. Ngayon yung kakambal mo, yung pinag-test administration mo. Or worse, hindi mo naman kamukha. <laughs> Tapos, you're allowing that person to pretend, for example, as Renz Luis Montano. Illegal yun. Kung baga, no lending of ID. Okay. Ano pa? No person shall use or exhibit, misrepresent their own certificate of registration or PRC ID or special permit. Ibig sabihin, bawal iparekto. Baka naman pinagawa nyo lang yan sa University of Recto. Baka naman, hindi ka license tapos you're using RPM. Kunyari, suspendido ka, tapos nagpagawa ka sa recto kasi gusto mo mag-practice. Illegal yun. Or worse, hindi ka license, nagpagawa ka lang sa recto, bawal din yun. Panghuli, give any false, inaccurate, misleading, incomplete information to the board to get, to pass the board exam. To get a PRC ID. Kunyari, yung TOR na sinabit mo sa PRC, pinagawa mo lang sa University of Recto. That is a violation of this one. You are giving false information for you to qualify to take the board exam. <laughs> Parang ang iba, pang palabas na ata yan, RPM August, kung kakambal niya yung client. No, hindi na ata yan sa tunay na buhay. Parang sa client. <laughs> okay, what else? No corporation, partnership, or association, or entity shall operate a psychology office center or clinic, okay, without securing a permit from the board. Very self-explanatory. Ba bago ka magtayo ng psychological clinic, bago kayo mag-operate, dapat may permit to operate coming from the board of psychology. Okay. Tatandaan nyo to kasi tama yan. Next month, magpa-practice na kayo. Okay, meron na kayong PRCID at Certificate of Registration. So, mabigat na responsibility na siya. Diba? Next month, meron na kayo. So, you are now bounded by the PAP Code of Ethics and you shall abide by what is said in the Republic Act 129 Psychology Law. Okay. So, if you violate yung mga pinagsasabi ko, 
ito yung mga pwedeng mangyari sa'yo ayon sa batas natin. Any person that violates any provision of this act, its implementing rules and regulation shall be punished with imprisonment. Not less than six months, but not more than three years. So kita-kit sa kulungan kung magsisinungaling ka. Sana wag naman. No? Or a fine of not less than 10,000, but not more than 100,000 or both. Depende kanina, paano sir, paano sir kung nawala yung, uh, paano kung kinuha yung license ko? I think, um, nasa batas yun eh, hindi ko lang nalagay. Pero I think, it's the board that will decide if you will be allowed to be given a license again. Parang i-evaluate nila. Okay, evaluate nila if if ano ka na ulit, competent ka na ulit to practice. Hindi ko nga lang alam yung specifics kung paano nila ginagawa yan. Okay. Other than that, okay, the board may initiate action to enjoin, restrain, or prosecute any individual corporation, association, partnership, or entity engaging in the practice of psychology and psychometrics in violation of this act. So gagawa ng action ang Board of Psychology kung alam nila na meron kang hindi magandang ginagawa. And, ayan, the Board shall adopt and promulgate the Code of Ethics and the Code of Practice for Psychometricians prescribed prescribe in issues issued by the Accredited Professional Organization of Psychologists or the PAP. So, according sa batas, we follow the code of ethics of the P. Thank you very much. And I did, I do hope that you learned a lot tonight sa ating discussion na mahigit isa na lahat ng oras. I hope marami akong na-share with you, especially about sa ethics and also sa batas. I did enjoy this discussion. No? Pinagandaan ko talaga siya, talagang ni-research ko siya. And the last time I talked about this was when I was invited in a school. I'm just glad to talk about it again. I hope marami kayong natutunan. By the way, mag, um, once again, no, kung may chance na magkita-kita tayo sa All Star, sa Manila at sa Cebu. Okay? Tsaka i-advertise ko lang next month kapag license na kayo. No? I think pwedeng magkita-kita tayo. Ang, I think no, baka eligible na kayo mag-attend ng tinatawag na One in Psychology which is an event organized by the PAP Assessment Psychology Division para sa mga psychometrician. Hindi ko lang alam, napaka-tight kasi ng timeline. Kung by then, you will be licensed. Pero tingnan niyo yun, baka doon magkita-kita rin tayo sa One in Psychology 2024. And maybe, hindi pa ako sure kung magpa-PAP ako this year sa Bicol, parang hindi. No? Pero malay niyo lang. No? So baka kayo-kayo na lang magkita. No? Pero yeah, yeah. Okay? Other than that, Mag-invite lang ako baka interested kayo no kung may time, kung may extra time kayo today um may iba na kasagot na nito na nag-lecture ako sa RGO okay nung ano ito nung about sa developmental psychology may research ako about perfectionism and mental health kung may time lang kayo yung, yung mga nakasagot na nito just ignore this pa mga hindi pa I would appreciate it if you can help me with my ongoing study about perfectionism and mental health. I've sent the link in the chat. No? So I, it would take mga ara, oh yeah, no, to be ethical, it would take around 10 to 15 minutes to accomplish. Depende kung gano'ng kakabilis magbasa. Okay? Yan. Okay. Okay. Paano, sir, sa PAP Code of Ethics, kung yung client mismo yung nagbigay, still, we do not, you know, kasi malalaman ng mga tao na dati mo siyang client. Okay, so kahit sila yung nagbigay, just don't post it. That's the best way to abide by this ethical guideline. Okay? Ayun. Ayun, I, I hope marami akong na-share with you tonight. And the upper sa All-Star, it will be a, ma a mix of drills and lectures. So ako gumawa na ako ng set B ko ng dev site for Manila, um, set B ko ng ab site for Manila, at um, another set for site assessment for Cebu. Yan. O sa mga karatig na, sa mga malapit na province, sa mga taga Summer and Leyte, Bacolod, Iloilo, and Northern Mindanao, 
you may also want to join us in Cebu. So, um, this is my invitation. Possible na makita ko mga hindi lang taga Cebu, but also those from the nearby areas. Okay? Yeah. Thank you very much for listening. And I do hope that marami akong na-share with you guys tonight. Um, enjoy the rest of the night and maybe next week na tayo ulit magkikita. Okay? Let's all, let's all have our time for self-care. Thank you very much. And see you around. Good evening, everyone. And I mean, good night, everyone.